Hi guys and welcome to TechTumDB. This video is all about the parts that you see here being built into a DIY NAS. Now this is meant to be a budget NAS and there's a couple of components here that I couldn't quite source the most budget version of so I'll be linking to the budget version in the description down below but either way let's get started. So first off what is the aim of this NAS? Well I review a lot of standard network attached storage devices anyway, pre-built systems that you just drop some hard drives in and then they work and they're pretty decent but they're relatively expensive and fairly limited in their power and general use case uh, when it comes to a lot of things including their general you know, sort of CPU horsepower. With that said, this build comes in at around about a similar sort of price point to a lot of the other uh, you know, NAS builds, like NAS uh, systems, pre-built systems that I'm reviewing, but of course has way more power, so this should be pretty interesting. Starting off with the parts, we have the CPU, which in this case right here is a Ryzen uh, 3 1300X. I was aiming to go with the 1200, but uh, just due to stock levels and stuff, I went, I've got the 1300X instead, but as I said, I'll be linking to the 1200 which is a bit cheaper in the description down below. You can also go with one of the APUs as well, which is a fantastic choice and actually probably what I'd recommend. So I'll leave an option link to that down below as well. One of the sort of A8s that are in about the 50 pound mark as opposed to more the 100 pound mark. Next up is the motherboard and that is the ASUS A320M-K Prime. This is an A320 motherboard. So that means we can overclock the Ryzen CPU, but it's a NAS build, so I'm not too worried about that. For the RAM, I went with 16 gigs of Team Group T4's Vulcan RAM. This was the cheapest 16 gig kit on Overclockers UK who supplied the RAM, the case and the power supply and uh, helped out with their Seagate for the drives. Uh, so thank you to Overclockers UK for that. But the RAM itself is uh, non-ECC unfortunately, but it is 16 gigs and since we're gonna be using ZFS, that definitely helps out. You can go with eight gigs or even four gigs if you really want to, but because we're gonna be using ZFS in this setup, it does help to have more RAM available. When it comes to the case, we have a cooling case and in terms of the power supply we have a 300 watt co-link power supply. These are both fairly decent, definitely on the budget side of things, but they'll certainly do their job well and the actual co-link power supply, despite its very uh, kind of cheap looking box, uh, is still actually a pretty decent unit and especially at the 300 watts here, really nowhere near the, that limit at all. So it's nice to have a budget but still decent option. And when it comes to the hard drive, Seagate sent over two four terabyte Iron Wolf drives. These are the non-pro versions, but they're still uh, awesome NAS hard drives. They're actually pretty fast as well, so this should be pretty interesting when it comes to our RAID 1, so it's actually protected setup. Now, I'm going to be using a HyperX Fury 120GB SSD as my boot drive and potentially even a caching drive as well, but if you want to skip on buying an SSD, you can certainly just run free NAS off of a USB stick. Try and get something like a 16 or 32 gig if possible, but it's certainly very easy to do and you can do that no problem so you don't necessarily need an SSD in here. So that's the parts all set up. Now let's get into uh, sort of getting everything ready and actually building the system. So first things first, I got the motherboard out of its box, including the SATA cables and the rear I.O. shield, and then I went ahead and installed the Ryzen 3 CPU. After that, I installed the heatsink that came with the Ryzen CPU, which is really easy, just four screws into the standard backplate, and then I installed the RAM. If you want to know how to do any of this in more detail, feel free to check out the rest of my uh, build guide videos where I kind of go through this in a bit better detail for you, but otherwise the next step is getting the case ready for everything to be installed, so that includes taking the hard drive tray off of the top, installing the rear I.O. shield, and then installing the motherboard. You generally do this fairly easily, just at a slight angle, and then install, in this case, just four screws into the motherboard. Normally there would be at least six for this style of board, but because of this certain chassis there is uh, just only two available. Sadly, because of the compatibility issues with the width of this motherboard and the size of this case, you basically can't install a normal power supply or even properly an SFX power supply, so just bear that in mind if you are planning on this specific combination, you won't be able to fit this motherboard with a power supply in here. Now installing the hard drives are fairly simple, this case is a little bit strange in that you generally have to install the uh, sort of rubber standoffs and the screws into the bracket first and then place the hard drive underneath and then screw it in as opposed to just attaching the rubber bits to the hard drive and setting it in, but otherwise adding the SATA cables and the SATA power cables are next. 
and then also do the same for the SSD on the far side. As you can see, these are now suspended over top of the CPU coolers. So they actually have pretty decent airflow going over them, which is always good. And of course, uh, the same for the SSD attaching the SATA cables uh, and the power cable to that so that it can get data and power. Otherwise, it was just the case of installing the graphics card that I wanted to use in here, which is an RX 460, and otherwise uh, just kind of cleaning everything back up, making sure that everything has power and everything is secured as well as it can be in this slightly bodged chassis, and uh, yeah, otherwise closing it all up, getting it ready to go, and uh, taking it downstairs to install everything. Now that the machine is built with some fairly heavy complications, uh, and I've had a haircut, let's take a look at how to install the FreeNAS operating system. Now the first thing you want all need to do is create a bootable USB stick. The easiest way to do this is to download a, f a program called Rufus, which is a really simple just uh, run it exe file uh, that allows you to create bootable USB sticks. Head over to FreeNAS's website and download the FreeNAS ISO and then use Rufus to and, uh, create a bootable USB stick. All it needs to be a one gig or more USB stick, so not too much to worry about. Once you do that, plug in the USB stick to your machine and then go through the setup process. It's really simple, just make sure uh, in the BIOS that you select your USB device as the device you want to boot from, and then once you've done that, it basically takes you through the steps pretty easily. Uh, you just press 1 to install it, uh, and then press enter, and that's basically it. You just let it do its thing, and then once it's done, you can then tell it to reboot the machine, and uh, you just re remove the USB stick, and that's pretty much it. So once you've installed the FreeNAS operating system, and you've got those 12 options and the IP address listed on screen, that's basically basically it for this machine. You can turn, take the uh, you know uh, video out, out, uh, so you don't have to connect this to a, a TV or a monitor or anything like that, uh, and just go to that IP address on a separate machine, whether that's your desktop or your laptop, anything with a web browser should, in theory, anyway, work. Uh, so you just go to that, and because FreeNAS is basically uh, entirely designed so that that web UI does everything, unless you need to configure the networking uh, you know, infrastructure here, uh, you basically don't need to touch this machine ever again, which is actually pretty nice. Running through the web UI, it's a pretty simple procedure to get everything set up. It's a, a very simple, straightforward wizard where you just basically click next most of the time, uh, select a couple of things, including your redundancy, uh, how you want it to either be uh, in effectively RAID 0 or RAID 1 uh, or anywhere in between, and depending how many drives you end up having connected will also depend on what options options you have available to you. Do bear in mind that ZFS uses a fair amount of RAM for its process, so just put that in mind if you are building a fairly large array and fairly, uh, you know, not necessarily a massive amount of RAM to go with it. Now I've barely scratched the surface when it comes to FreeNAS and what it can do, and this is currently in its, in its current form a very simple setup for a NAS, but the real majesty of uh, building your own NAS as opposed to going with a pre-built solution is that stuff like FreeNAS has so many options available. You can run virtual machines on this system as well, so especially because I threw a, a Ryzen uh, 3 1300X in here with 16 gigs of RAM and we've got an RX 460 in here too, just for again my own uses, uh, then this is a really awesome uh, overall sort of virtualization machine if I want to throw a couple of cores and even the graphics card at the problem. So it's a really uh, interesting setup and of course gives you a lot more power and a lot more flexibility when it comes to uh, your storage and uh, general computing needs. Now of course as a bit of a caveat, if you are someone who isn't too techno savvy if you like and someone who doesn't want to go into the intricate and fine details of every nook and cranny of the FreeNAS operating system, then this may not necessarily be for you and picking up a pre-built NAS may be the better option for you. Of course the QNAPs and the Asus stores and the Synologies do have their place in the world for people like that, so feel free to check out my full list of reviews on those sorts of NASes if you're interested, but I think this is a really interesting project and I'm going to have a lot of fun playing around with the free NAS oper operating system um, as, uh, as and when I can. So that's pretty much it for this video, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. Thank you to Overclockers UK, Asus, AMD and uh, Seagate for helping out with the parts in this build, it's a massive help to be able to actually you know, have these parts and be able to build this sort of system and showcase it to you guys so thank you to those people for uh, supporting this project if you want to support future projects especially the more diy stuff then feel free to take a look at the patreon link in the description down below that does genuinely help out with uh, all those sorts of projects giveaways and all that sort of stuff so uh, thank you to you patrons too and also there's amazon and overclock uk affiliate links in the description down below too if you're buying from either of those places and you want to help me out 
Otherwise, there will be some other videos over here for you. And of course, you can check out that subscribe button down there too if you're new to the channel. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. So feel free to uh, hang about as well. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And we'll see you all in the next video.